everyone and welcome back to my channel today I'm here with a few tips or things that you should know when caring for your natural hair so wait let's just take a moment to look at my shirt I know I'm lame but I have on my Louisiana Tech shirt today because last year on this day May 24th 2014 I graduated um yeah I know I'm lame but anyway if you see me looking down, it's because I have things written down, like to help keep me on track and not ramble. So the first tip that I have for anyone transitioning or if you just big chopped is to, which is the hardest one of them all, be patient. Like I can't even think. It's just the hardest one of them all, just to be patient. So I tried to transition. I got my last relaxer on January 21st, 2000. 12. Yeah, 2012. And I tried to transition because I was like, I'm not wearing a fro. You're not going to see me with an air fro. I'm not doing it. But when I washed my hair and it was tangled in a matted mess where the new growth and the relaxer was, it was March 31st when I was just like, I cannot deal with this. No. So. I was at home and I had washed my hair and this was I guess month three and I told my mom I was like if Miss Twyla is the one who did my big chop hey Miss Twyla um I said if she does not answer the phone right now I'm going to Walmart get me a relaxer and I'm not doing this because I just I cannot but anyway she answered the phone and I went and did it so I only transitioned for three months because that was just way too much for me so Kudos to anyone who can transition because that was not for me. No, ma'am. So, um, the next one I have is number two. That your hair is your hair. It will not be the same as anyone else's. All these hair types and things like this. Okay, maybe some people's hair is more curly or more kinky, but nobody has the same hair products won't work the same on your hair your hair will not curl the same as someone else I have no problem telling what products I use but my products that I use that work for my hair may or may not work for your hair this whole natural hair thing is like trial and error you have to try a product if it doesn't work move on to the next if it works keep it in your regimen you know that it works the third thing that I have is to trim your ends when they need to be trimmed this is like the one that I did not do and I'm having a setback right now I have some ends that need to go but I'm going to wait until July because I'm getting um, a sew in for my sister's wedding so right before I get that I'm gonna like chop it may be like a mini chop because I may have like an inch or two more that I need to cut off but I just cannot do it right now hopefully I'm trying to just, you know, keep them where they're at by sealing and moisturizing my ends so they won't keep going up. But um, some people say you need to trim every three months, every six months. You trim your hair when you need it because some people, like me, I didn't care for my ends. So I would probably have to trim my ends more than a person that cares for their ends. So you just have to go by your hair. It's good to have like these tips and stuff, but at the end of the day, it's your hair and you have to go buy your hair. The next thing I have is to moisturize. Now this, there are so many methods as far as using oil first, using a leave-in first, a cream first. Again, you have to go buy your hair. So sometimes I may use the oil first and then put my leave-in. Sometimes I put my leave-in first and then my oil. It just depends on how my hair feels at that time is how I do it. So sometimes I may, I think in my twist out video, I did the oil first because I put it on my scalp and then I ran it down the rest of my hair and then I put the leave-in and then I put my cream which was the curl enhancing smoothie. But sometimes when I do another style I may do it totally different. So it just depends on your hair and how your hair absorbs the product. Oh. I skipped one. Sorry. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Water. Water is so, so, so important. I don't have a problem drinking water, but it's like the amount of water you're supposed to drink. 
I never drink that amount, but I do try to drink more water than I drink anything else. Um, so drinking water and water in a spray bottle. So of course, like any other thing in your body, you need water to flush out toxins and all of that. So you need to keep your hair and your scalp hydrated. So drinking water is important. And also having the water in the spray bottle, like as far as when you're doing styles and your hair starts to dry out, you need to, you know, re-wet your hair with the spray bottle. Okay, I just, I don't even know why I made this list because I just went all, it's all jumbled up now. So, the next one I have is to deep condition. This is so important because it nourishes your hair, it repairs your hair. It's not like a conditioner that you leave on for like one to five minutes like a regular conditioner, which you can still use those, but I deep condition once a week, mostly on Sundays. Um, depending on my weekend, I'll do it on Sundays. But I try to do it at least once a week because throughout the week, even though you're reapplying products, I feel like my hair dries. Even with reapplying products every day or every other day, depending on the style, I still feel like my hair dries out. So I like to do mine once a week. Some people do it every two weeks or once a month. It just depends on your hair. If I'm not sitting under the dryer, I like to have um, two plastic caps on my head. Well, even if I'm sitting under the dryer, I still use two plastic caps. But if I'm not sitting under the dryer, I normally deep condition on a day when I have nothing to do. Sometimes I deep condition for like eight hours. I just leave it on my hair and do whatever I need to do, like around the house or whatever. Or if I'm kind of in a rush or if I'm going to bed or something like that, I like to sit under the dryer for like 30 minutes to an hour. So heat helps with the deep conditioner. I'm sorry. Heat helps um, with your deep conditioner because it helps the products penetrate your hair shaft and get in there and moisturize and do all of the okay, things that so the next do. one is cleansing and co-washing there's a big thing about how you should not use shampoos or sulfate free shampoos or only co-wash all of this stuff and like I said for the 30th time you have to go with your hair so I actually cleanse my hair once a week Especially now since my scalp is just doing something that I have no idea what it's doing. It's like itchy, but I don't have dandruff, so I'm like, what is it? So I'm trying to figure that out now, but I cleanse my hair every week with a sulfate-free shampoo. And right now I'm still using my Shea Moisture Black Castor Oil line. I think it has apple cider vinegar in it, and I can't think of what else. Um... But I'll list it in the, in the description below of all the products I mentioned. I'll list in the description box below. So I cleanse my hair every Sunday when I wash my hair. And sometimes by Wednesday, if my hair is too itchy, that's when I'll co-wash. Because conditioner does cleanse your hair, but most of them don't have the lather effect. And that's what I like. So maybe by Wednesday, if my hair is itching or if it's feeling dry, I will co-wash. But I do cleanse at least once a week. Sometimes I co-wash midweek. Sometimes I don't. And another thing is minimum to no heat. Okay, so so many natural people or whatever are afraid of heat. I don't know why. Some people just are afraid of heat. They think it's going to damage your hair which you can get heat damage if you do not do it correctly. I'm sorry, my phone is going off. So you can get heat damage if you do not um, take proper care of your hair as far as using heat protectants, um, deep conditioning before you use heat on your hair, and things like that. Or using too much heat, like heat every day is not good for relaxed or natural hair. So minimum to no heat as some of you know i did have a keratin treatment i got it in october and it lasts for five months i think the last time i used heat in my hair was february was it february i know i use it for valentine's day and i can't remember hold on i think i have it in my calendar the last time i used heat um, or i thought 
I had it in my phone. Oh, it wasn't February. It was. It wasn't February. It was April fifth. Last flat iron. I don't know if you can see it or not. But yeah, so April fifth was the last time I used a flat iron. It feels longer than that, I guess, because I hadn't worn my natural hair in so long, having to do stuff to it every day. It feels longer than April fifth. Um, but anyway, what I was getting <laughs> at is that you know I had the. Um, keratin treatment which no chemicals are used no formaldehyde or any of that so if you do want to get a keratin treatment please do your research and make sure that it's no chemicals in it because some of them do have chemicals even when they say they don't but my sister did my hair so I know that I had nothing to worry about even though I was scared but I know that she would not purposely damage my hair so I had the keratin treatment so from October to April and then I did take some breaks but not many. I took some breaks closer to April so maybe like in the end of February, March I kind of took some breaks without using heat but before then I was straightening my hair every week and you can see I have no heat damage at all but that's because I deep conditioned every week and I used heat protectants and leave-ins every single week. The only thing I did not do that damaged my hair was not trimming my split ends. And I was applying heat to the split ends. So I don't have heat damage to my hair. I have, I just made my split ends worse if that makes sense. So I will say if you have split ends, do not apply heat to your hair until you get them trimmed because it will just bring the split on up your shaft and then you'll be bald like me um just kidding but I flat iron my hair every week and I had no heat damage at all every time I wash my hair my hair reverted right back um, when I applied shampoo or conditioner or whatever so heat I don't want to say heat doesn't damage your hair because heat will damage your hair but the improper use of heat will damage your hair so blow drying, excessive blow drying, excessive flat ironing, all of that will damage your hair. But if you do it the, the proper thing is way, you low will not. manipulation and protective styles. So low manipulation means low manipulation, not manipulating your hair a lot. So doing styles where you don't have to comb or brush your hair a lot. Um, now I feel with twist outs and stuff, it's kind of in between because you don't have to comb your hair. I don't comb my hair like every day when I get ready to retwist I just take a section and kind of finger detangle it and then twist it back up so I don't use a comb or brush every day but I feel like protective styles are the best way to see your hair growth and to retain your length because you're not in your hair every day you're not breaking your hair off when you comb or so brush your I hair. So after I big chopped I think I wore my hair my little TWA my teeny weeny afro I think I wore it for like a month or a month and a half because I still had a little bit of relaxed ends um, on my hair and I think I'm gonna do a natural hair journey video with like pictures and stuff so you can see like my journey so I wore my hair for like a month or a month and a, a month and a month and a half and then I started getting protective styles which were braids and sew-ins I kind of went back and forth and that's when I seen my hair really really grow because I wasn't dealing Especially with in it that every stage day. where you can't really do anything to your hair it's kind of like too short and I don't know how to explain it you just can't do anything to it no styles look right that was the time that I really made sure I had something like a protective style so I did the sew-ins and the braids and I think I did like a month or a month and a half and I would take the sew-in out wash my hair, deep condition, all that, put it right back in. And then with my braids, I washed my braids. Some people think you can't wash your braids, like they will get messed up or whatever, but you can wash your braids or you can even do alcohol and like a towel or a cotton ball on your scalp and then apply oil after because the alcohol will dry your scalp out. But just to cleanse your hair, if you don't want to wash your braids, you can use alcohol. Some people may be against it. It worked for me, so you can try it if you want. And another thing with transitioning, when you are transitioning, the point where your new growth or your natural hair meets your relaxed hair, 
the point where they meet is a weak point. So if you're applying heat to that, it will eventually break your hair off. So if you're transitioning, do heatless styles. You can still try bantu knots or twist outs or getting protective styles or having someone who knows how to care for your natural hair do your hair while you're transitioning. And take your time when detangling um, when you're transitioning because that point is very weak, especially when it's wet. So be sure to have someone who knows what they're doing or do your research, watch YouTube videos to help you if you are transitioning and you do not want to big chop because you don't want to break your hair off and then you have to big chop anyway. That would kind of be pointless. There was one more thing that I wanted to say. Oh, another thing is to never, ever, 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 ever comb or brush your hair while it is dry. If you want breakage for life, then do that. But never ever comb or brush your hair when it's dry. I always like to detangle, I'll finger detangle my hair, like kind of pull the hair apart or pull the dead hair if I've had a protective style. Pull the dead hair off while I'm, you know, taking the braids out or whatever. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just got a picture of Chase. He's so cute and I miss him. They're in Hawaii. Um, but see, I don't even know what I was saying. I need to like put my phone. Oh, away I was saying I like finger. to finger detangle my hair and like pull the dead hair off, but I never detangle my hair until I have deep conditioned my hair while the deep conditioner is still in my hair. Because the product and the water will help the comb slide through and not like yank your hair out. I think that is it. I know I was all over the place. I'm sorry. That's kind of like how I am in real life. Like this is real life. <laughs> when I'm talking, even though I had a list of stuff, but I think I covered everything. Um, so to go back over everything in the order that I had them on my list, number one is to be patient. Number two, your hair is not the same as anyone else. Your curl pattern, the way your hair absorbs anything, um, the products that your hair will like will not be the same as any, anyone else. Even though you may find common products like that you and another person can use, they will not all be the same. Like, I have a few products that I didn't like for my hair that I gave to my aunt and she likes them. So, it just depends on your hair. Number three was water. Drinking water and having water in a spray bottle when you're styling. Deep conditioning, trimming your ends, moisturizing, cleansing, no heat or minimum to no say? heat. Not excessive heat? I love heat. I mean, I haven't had a bad experience with it, I guess because I've done my research and I know how to properly use blow dryers, sweat irons and all that. So, I don't have a problem with heat. So, I guess I can say not excessive heat. I'm sorry, I'm looking in the mirror. Should I say eight or minimum to no heat? Because I don't want anybody to say that I said they can use heat and then they get heat damage and they blame it on me. So and minimum low to no manipulation heat. and protective styles. Protective styles are your best friend. I cannot wait to get my next one. Um, they are like everything. It's like the only time I see my hair grow. I guess because it's been away. Or like with braids, you can actually see your new growth. Or when you take your extensions out, you can see how much your hair has grown versus when your hair like in these kind of styles every day you can't see your hair grow. I like to get protective styles when I think my hair is not growing, so when I take it down, I say, oh, my hair grew a little bit. That's just like something I like for reassurance that my hair okay, is Okay, really so growing. I think those are all the tips that I had. If I have any more, I will list them in the description box, so be sure to always check the description box. Um, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or anything like that, you can leave your comments below, or you can go over to one of my social media pages and leave me a comment or a question or whatever you have. Also let me know what videos you guys would like to see because I know it's a lot of natural people on YouTube that kind of do the same thing over. But just let me know videos you will want to see and I'll try to put them out for you guys. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, it is Sunday so tomorrow is Memorial Day so I hope you all have a great Memorial Day and be safe. I probably won't be doing anything but Y'all have fun, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.